So let's briefly walk through the new features of the System of Systems template 1.9. The first one is the system context. Any system can be defined as root context. Once you have selected a system as root context, it will define what documents and what work items are relevant in the context of that system of system structure. Selecting a system context will give you some additional information in your project. The system documents links section, for example, will always open the work item in the right document of the right system. Also, when you edit a work item, you will get additional information related to that work item. For example, if the work item you're currently seeing is not in the context, because the current version of the work item, which is typically opened by Polarin, may be located in a different document. But you can see the same work item is referenced in different versions in many different systems. So this red bar allows you to open the correct document and then edit the work item. The same is available if you open the work item in the document view. Also here you have a little indication on the right telling you, hey, this might not be the right document to edit in the context of that system. And now you can say, okay, change the context or open a different document. Also, a new menu was introduced, the SOS menu, which gives you access to the architectural view. So you see the system and the subsystems, gives you the possibility to search within the whole system of systems context. And some filters are already predefined to make it easier for you to select, for example, types or status and so on. The suspects menu gives you access to all work items which are potentially inconsistent because you've changed another work item. So for example, let's say we change this work item by overwriting it. Now the workflow action will actually check all incoming links, overwrite them and mark them as suspect. This was already there in the previous version. Now with the SOS suspect links, it gives you a list of all the work items you should review based on that change. The SOS Documents menu gives you access to all the documents of all systems and subsystems and the Set as Root Context again allows you to change the root context. Another new feature is the SOS Create menu. You can click on the SOS Create button on the top menu area and there you have the option to create new work items in the context of the currently selected system. If you have selected a subsystem, you have the option either to create work items for the subsystem or for the root system in the current context. What else? We have new traceability tables. The traceability tables are available in the trace menu below the separator. So if you click on one of these, the new traceability table will be opened and it gives you some nice options like um, lazy loading. So if you scroll down, even on big data, it will dynamically load the additional work items. So you don't have to wait for the page to load everything. Then you have options to show either full coverage or uncovered work items to understand which items you need to refine or everything. And then you can even filter the report with some additional standard Polarian query showing you only the content you are interested in. So that's the new traceability table. But also the old traceability table was improved. So it allows to display big data. Before there was no paging, but now you can see these little errors in the top area. And if you click on them, it will just load the next set of pages. So you can go for and forward and backward to display um, the relevant data you want to see. The visualization of system documents within a system work item was also improved. The rendering of the changed work items was improved dramatically. Try it with big data and you will see how fast the changes are rendered. Additionally, there is a new section, potential updates inside the system documents view. The idea is that when you change 
some requirements in the previous version. So um, let's just do it here. Let's just add some text. This information could be displayed in the current system documents view. So when we go into the version 1.1, you can see there is a potential update coming in. Clicking on it will open the standard merge window from Polarion and you can use the merge options here to merge the changes from the previous version into the current one. What else? Document templates which you use as a basis for creating new documents can now be stored in a common template project. So basically what you see here in the drop-down list can be configured using the administration options of Polarium. There is a configuration file which is used for the SOS template. It's the SOS config enum. And there you find two entries. One is for the template identifier which defines what documents are considered as templates. These are the documents with the word template inside, for example, and in which project the templates are located. So this is either the current project, that's the default setting, or you can specify any project ID here in these um, properties. And then Polarian will look for documents inside that central template project, we can call it, and then just display these templates in the drop-down list. In version 1.9 also, you can now link test cases directly with user stories, defects or change requests in the tracker view. This was already possible before, but now you have this option when you click on the plus symbol, which makes it just more easy to, to do that linkage. A little change was adding the system documents view to the document properties panel. So now also in the document properties view, you can see the related documents for that system. So it's easier for you to switch between documents when you are editing specifications. You can now add existing user stories to the currently selected user story. So additionally to creating new ones, just pick user stories which are already there in the database and link them with the current one. For configuration parameters, there was not yet a view to show in which documents they are contained. So now you can see when you, um, when you pick a configuration parameter work item, in which documents or in which, actually in which system versions, this parameter is used. When you use variance generation with a system of systems template, you can now much easier understand why a generation of a variant failed because you see the pure error message directly in the UI and then investigate a bit further because you get the work item ID which caused the problem. And I guess that's all about the new features in version 1.9. There are more little features, but if you want to investigate those, please have a look at the release notes. Thanks for watching.